Fort Restaurant was built in 1962 as the first full-scale adobe replica of Colorado's 1830s fur trading fort, Bent's Old Fort, originally located in southeastern Colorado. Sam and Elizabeth Arnold wanted it to be a museum to teach the public about Bent's Fort, but the construction costs of handmaking 80,000 adobe bricks was so expensive they turned it into a restaurant serving foods of what the indigenous people, trappers, and traders would have eaten in game meats and native foods. The Arnold family moved upstairs in the living quarters of the fort, and Holly lived on top of the fort when she was nine years old. In the daytime, the Arnold family led school tours and taught students about this fascinating period of Colorado history. Holly Arnold Kinney, the proprietress of the fort restaurant, grew up in a fort located in Jefferson County, just two miles south of Morrison on Highway 8 and 285. Today, their 501c3 nonprofit Tesoro Cultural Center continues to educate the public about the 19th century Colorado through many tours and events. In 2017, Kinney was inducted into the Denver and Colorado Tourism Hall of Fame for her lifetime of work in promoting the history, culture, traditions, and cuisine of the Southwest through the Tesoro Cultural Center, specifically the annual Indian Market Pow Wow and the Fort Activities and Events. The Fort Adobe Building was placed on the National Register of Historic Places in 2007 and the National Society of the Daughters of the American Revolution inducted the fort on their national listing of historic places in 2021. Ms. Kinney received the NASDAQ National Historic Preservation Award Medal in 2017. They have just celebrated the fort's 60th anniversary. Enjoy the film. Hello, I'm Sam Arnold, and welcome back to Frying Pans West. We've got a fun show for you tonight. Uh, we took a camera crew up to South Dakota to Rosebud Indian Reservation and got some... Bent's Fort was a fur trading fort built originally about 1833 down on the Arkansas River in southeastern Colorado, about 160 miles from here. Uh, it was used as a basic uh, center for fur trappers and also for freighting to Santa Fe on the Santa Fe Trail. My dream was to build a replication of that fort from some drawings that we saw in, that were done in 1845. And so we did that. In 1962, I brought uh, uh, 22 men up from Taos, New Mexico, and we puddled 80,000 bricks here, each brick 14 inches long by 10 inches wide by 4 inches thick, each brick approximately 45 pounds. It's a pretty impregnable place. It, it's really tough and good. specialize in the food and drink of that early Bent's Fort period. The buffalo is, of course, the meat that they ate primarily there. We also do elk and arctic muskox, uh, rattlesnake, ostrich these days, uh, it's big. Most of all, buffalo. Way back in the days of General Kearney coming west in 1846, they rolled out the cannon at Bent's Fort to give them a salute and they put so much powder in it, they blew it up. We bang our cannons off into this valley down here, and the valley has a lot of wildlife in it. Um, deer, cougars, bobcat, raccoons. Here's to the childs what's come afore. 
Here's to the child what's come afar. And here's to the pilgrims what's come arter. And here's to the pilgrims what's come arter. May your trails be free of grizz. May your trails be free of grizz. And your packs filled with plues. And your packs filled with plues. And fat buffler in your pot. And fat buffler in your pot. <laughs> Right on. <laughs>
I walk. <laughs> I'm gonna give you the mountain man toast now. Here's to the child's what's come afore, and here's to the pilgrims what's come harder. And may your trails be free of grizz, and your packs filled with clues, and fat buffler in your pot. And that's the mountain man toast. The fort was honored to host the world leaders for the official state dinner for the Summit of Eight, June 21st, 1997. President Clinton and First Lady Hillary were the hosts, waiting outside for the different motorcades carrying each world leader. There were two European leaders from the Netherlands, as well as Boris Yeltsin from Russia, Prime Minister Hashimoto from Japan, Helmut Kohl from Germany, Prime Minister Tony Blair from England, Prime Minister Prodi from Italy, President Chirac from France, and Prime Minister Chrétien from Canada. The Clintons offered Western dress, including cowboy hats, Western belt buckles, and the First Ladies were given buffalo hair woven vests and broomstick skirts to wear. Most of the leaders gratefully accepted the Clintons' offer, except for Russia, Germany, and France. Hashimoto loved his new cowboy hat and belt buckle. My family, my dad, Samuel, stepmother, Carrie, son, Oren, husband, Jeremy, and I were waiting for the leaders to pose for their photo on the second level of the fort in front of the library. What an honor. Our cannoneers were ready to shoot the historic 19th century cannon in a salute, but President Clinton said no. Then Prime Minister Prodi challenged Bill Clinton and said, that's just like you Americans. You show off your big guns, but you never shoot them. Bill Clinton then said, all right, shoot the goddamn cannon. And boom, it went. Another fun story. Boris Yeltsin always wanted to try buffalo and went into our kitchen to taste it as it was cooking. He had seen a herd of buffalo and was interested in importing live buffalo to Siberia as they could withstand the cold winters and be a health meat for the Russians. When the leaders dined outside on our patio, a beautiful double rainbow appeared over the valley and someone said to the leaders, this is a symbol of world peace. They were all enchanted by shining times at the fort. And joining us now to tell us more about the night is Holly Arnold Kinney. Holly, you're the daughter of Sam Arnold who owns the fort. How was it like inside of it? It was so fabulous. I mean, the uh, president and Mrs. Clinton loved the whole Western feeling in the 1840s period. And as each president arrived or prime minister arrived, they looked at each other's bolo ties and they showed off their cowboy boots and they were having the best time. You now Bent's Fort, after we're in the modern day reincarnation of Bent's Fort, where people from Mexico and the East and the West would all come together and trade and swap stories. I mean, on a larger scale, that's what's happening between Mexico and Canada and the United States right now. And it is sort of centered in Colorado if we play our cards right. So in a very funny and real way, Sam Arnold's projections and his vision of, of how history becomes a metaphor for our future is being realized every day. And I am in, intensely grateful that Holly, who had a, her own career and her own life, and her very accommodating and patient husband, Jeremy. Because <laughs> if somebody in the oil business, I know he wasn't planning to go into the restaurant business. <laughs> but th th they have taken this on, and through the Tesoro Foundation that he Sam helped start, they've taken that to the next level, and that they continue this incredibly valued service. So I am honored to be here, and I would almost try to the toast, which. Is there anybody in this room that hasn't heard Sam do that toast at least 50 times? <laughs> and yet I won't try and do it, but I will lead you. Imagine I've just given the toast, and I would love to be part of a communal wah, right? So on three, one, two, three, wah! Governor, we just found out that you celebrated your birthday yesterday. <laughs> Let's give three hip hip huzzas for Governor Hickenlooper's birthday. Hip hip huzzah! Hip hip huzzah! Hip hip huzzah! Hip, hip, huzzah! <laughs> Thank you. 
The Tassaro Cultural Center is the heart and soul of the fort. Our two signature events are the 1840s Rendezvous in Spanish Colonial Market, held in September, and the Indian Market Powwow, held in June. Fighting style knife. <laughs> In 2023 will be the 23rd year we have brought a full intertribal contest powwow back, honoring an American Indian veteran who has fought for our freedoms. Additionally, we feature 50 of the top American Indian artists who have won many awards at the Santa Fe Indian Market and Heard Museum. Each artist demonstrates their craft and sells beautiful pieces, from jewelry to pottery, sculpture, traditional arts, and more. This event is great for families, as we also have storytelling, Indian crafts, and educational dances to showcase the different regalia of different tribes live hawks and eagles, and their importance to Indian culture, many other fun demonstrations. Don't miss our upcoming Indian Market powwow, June 3rd and 4th, 2023 at the Fort, from 10 to 4 both days. George Curtis Levi of the Southern Cheyenne Nation and Francis Sherwood of Oneida Arikara Nation are our event coordinators. It's historic to bring the Cheyenne, Arapaho, Oneida, Arikara nations back home to Colorado, especially to our fort. This will be the best year yet. Thank you to all our Tesaro sponsors, especially SCFD and Community First Foundation of Jefferson County. Your support provides important cultural education for the public. And to the fort and my fort family of employees, happy 60th anniversary. Huzzah!